Hi guys, Ramesh Palutla here, product marketing manager for the for the MX, uh, with a quick update on the latest and the greatest in the in Juniper's MX Universal Routing Platforms. The 15-year-old track record of the Juniper Universal Routing Platform has been quite exemplary in terms of the versatility. Uh, it is and it has continued to evolve on all three axes of hardware, software, and silicon and along five different dimensions of scale, performance, versatility, uh, security, and automation. And the market has spoken. We're number one in Ethernet DCI, according to 650 Group, and we're number two in BRAS, according to ACG. And this has led to a global adoption of the MX uh, across every SB with hundreds of thousands of systems deployed. With me here today to talk about the innovations on the MX10,000 product line is Truman Joe, Senior Product Line Manager, and Deepak Tripathi, Senior Technical Marketing Engineer, uh, will walk us through a short demonstration as well. Welcome, Truman and Deepak. Let's start with a question for you, Truman. MX is widely deployed across the routing world, and the MX10,000 is the latest incarnation of the versatile and proven product line. Talk to us about the MX, MX10,000 and what is the genealogy of the MX10,000? Thanks, Ramesh. You're absolutely right. The MX10,000 is the latest incarnation of the MX series, which is the most versatile edge routing product line in the industry. It inherits strong DNA from 15 plus years of innovation in the MX portfolio, including the MX960, 48240, the MX2000, five generations of Trio ASIC, and the best routing stack in the industry called Junos. MX versatility allows us to accommodate 10 generations of line cards in a single system with full backward compatibility. That versatility allowed us to get segment routing working on an MPC-1, which was already shipping when segment routing was nothing more than a drawing on a paper napkin in a steakhouse. Junos is the best and battle-tested networking OS in the industry. We release four software versions a year with 400 and 50 major features released in the last five years. We've had a consistent, clear strategy with one Junos and Trio and has ensured investment protection, backward forward compatibility, and a smooth migration path for our customers. We've been here for the last 15 years and will be here for the next 15 years and beyond. Uh, you mentioned the MX10,000 and its unparalleled versatility. We would customer benefits uh, can we get out of it? And what would our customers see as positives that would help them with solving their business problems? Well, at the basic level, versatility means that a single platform can be used to support a multitude of different use cases. Versatility on MX10,000 means much more than this. It also means that all of the different use cases can be running simultaneously on the platform allowing customers to easily converge multiple networks into one. A high level versatility also provides assurance that the platform has the flexibility to address currently unknown future requirements, such as the support for segment routing I just mentioned. That flexibility provides industry leading investment protection to our customers. This level of versatility while delivering line rate performance is not achievable with Merchant Silicon. This is not achievable with a pipeline design. It can only be achieved with custom programmable silicon purpose-built to simultaneously deliver that unique combination of both high versatility and maximum performance. At Juniper, that secret sauce is Trio. So, so speaking of Trio, Trio has a long and storied history. Uh, talk to us about what business problems that Juniper Trio can solve that others cannot. The MX10,000 series, um, deploys TRIO line cards. We just taped out the sixth generation of TRIO and are actively planning the seventh generation of TRIO with full backward compatibility with shipping gear today. TRIO with its agile best-in-class programmable silicon continues to provide unmatched performance at cloud scale for the MX10,000 series. It has a strong record of backward compatibility, which I just previously mentioned. In addition, the highly optimized single chip implementation of TRIO PFE minimizes costly interchip communication, thereby enabling higher performance at lower power compared to multi-chip designs. So let's talk about the software 
that brings the hardware to life, uh, and that in, in Juniper's case is Junos. Talk to us about Junos, Truman, and what how Junos has evolved over time. Well, Junos has been shipping on Juniper routers for over 20 plus years. It has been continually upgraded and enhanced over that time. It is a single network OS that powers Juniper's broad portfolio of physical and virtual switching security and routing products, including all MX platforms. Built for reliability, security, and flexibility, it runs some of the world's most sophisticated network deployments, giving operators a competitive advantage over other network operating systems. To maximize customer flexibility, we offer Junos under a cloud error consumption model. The flex licensing allows for just-in-time deployment of features and functionality along four degrees of freedom. The first is what features are required. We offer them under three tiers, advanced, premium, or base tier. We offer them when they are needed, so we have a pay-as-you-grow option to allow features to be turned on as needed. We also offer them where they are needed. So our licenses are portable. That means they can be moved from one box to another. And finally, we offer flexibility in how long they are needed for. We have both perpetual options as well as three-year and five-year subscription-based licenses. Thank you, Truman. We will now hand it off to Deepak for a technical demonstration which we, where we can take the MX10,000A uh, out for a spin. Sure. Uh, let's start with the network topology that we have for today's demo. We have one MX10.8 acting as the uh, provider S box with uplink ports connected to LC2101. And access site ports are connected to highly dense 1 gig and 10 gig line card, also known as LC480. Uh, we have other MXs, other boxes in the topology. Two of these boxes are acting as uh, a core device. And Paragon suit is uh, having BGP link state session uh, between all these network nodes, including MX10.8. And we also have uh, path computation element protocol or PSEP running uh, between all these network, network elements or network nodes. So as part of this uh, demo, we'll look at the onboarding of MX10.8 using Paragon. And uh, once the nodes are onboarded, we'll integrate it with Paragon uh, Pathfinder and show the provisioning of LSP. We also have one more uh, advanced use case uh, wherein we'll demonstrate using Paragon Insight, the closed loop automation uh, part. And uh, we have traffic generator ports connected towards uh, uh, in, uh, both the sites with the CPE devices for sending traffic end to end. Okay. Good, good, good. Great introduction, Deepak. Uh, so let's talk about the LC480 and the LC2101 on the MX10008. I mean, MX has a strong history of backward compatibility, so to speak. Give, me, give us some idea of the compatibility of the LC480 uh, with respect to the LC2101? Sure. That's a very good question, Ramesh. Um, and thank you for bringing it up. So um, I would really like to point that in Juniper, uh, we really value the investments and faith customer has on our products. Um, so unlike many other vendors, uh, we have full interoperability of LC2101 uh, uh, with LC480 uh, and even the upcoming uh, line card, LC9600. Uh, of course, that will require uh, a new fabric card. So all these line cards will interop with each other along with the shipping components as of today that we have, uh, which includes the routing engine, the power modules, the fan trays. So there will be full interoperability with all these line cards and with the shipping chassis components, uh, thus providing a better investment protection to our customers, right? So. I hope I answered your question. Uh, yeah, please uh, continue. So now that we have discussed on the topology, uh, let's look at the Paragon uh, automation suit. And once the administrator uh, logs in, he will have his dashboard available for quick, quick view of uh, network health. And uh, Paragon uh, does provide various options for uh, the uh, customization, whether they want to include severity level or summary or alert status, or they want to look at device group health. Paragon provides all those options basically to uh, for the administrator to look at these parameters in his dashboard. Then once um, we go to uh, configuration, then we need to onboard these devices 
Okay, so we have already onboarded uh, some of these devices and let's look at one of them. And let's look at the inventory information for this device. Uh, right, so let's go here and view inventory. And as you can see, we have all these information captured, including uh, the chassis temperature, the serial number, and this also gives you information on uh, the various line cards that we have in the system, uh, what kind of uh, licenses we have on the system, the serial number, the part number, all that information is uh, available with, the, with just a few cl clicks for uh, our customer. So once um, they have onboarded the devices, then let's go and look at um, configuring some of these protocols. So let's configure, configure um, the protocols required for BGP, uh, uh, basically the BGP uh, LS, which is running on uh, Paragon Pathfinder to communicate, and the PSEP sessions that we have uh, running between the no, uh, path competition element and uh, the network nodes, right? So we have PSEP configured here. We have net conf configured here. We also have Juno's telemetry configured here, and it is up and running on this device. So let's just submit it. So once uh, we have committed this configuration, let's go to network view. So with the help of BGP link state I just uh, talked about, we our topology is discovered here. We see all the boxes uh, which are there, uh, part of our network. So we have them. Now let's go ahead and try creating one LSP. Right, so we, uh, also one more thing that I wanted to point out is you can see here we have PSEP up and running on these devices, right? So let's now just go ahead and create provision one LSP. Let's create one LSP, and here we go. We'll be provisioning it through PSEP. The transport protocol that we are going to use is uh, segment routing. Okay, so and then uh, let's give it a, a nice name: Gold Site AMX 1098 to Site B. Our um, our uh, ingress PE will be MX1028 site A. The egress PE uh, will be our remote PE will be our uh, remote site B. And there are many other options such as constant advanced that we have, but let's just add it, LSP, add the LSP here for the time being. Yes, add tunnel request has been successfully sent. And there is LSP which is being created here. Let's look at it. Yeah, you can see. And now let's go and verify the same thing on our MX. So let's verify first thing as our spring has been enabled. Segment routing is enabled. It is up and running. <clears throat> now let's look at the LSP which we provisioned, whether there, that is there or not. Yes, it is there on the box. It is being provisioned on with the same name that we had given. And it is taking the shortest path uh, between the two nodes. Now let's verify the same with the help of a trace route uh, CLI. Yeah, so we can see that trace route has successfully been completed. Now let's verify the traffic part. Yeah, we have traffic running uh, between the two nodes, and you can see that transmitted frame and received frame rate is same, 200k frames per second. We are whatever we are transmitting, we are receiving end to end. Right. So now um, that we have looked at uh, this part, I wanted to go into the advanced use case of uh, closed loop automation. But before that. Let me uh, do start one script, which will basically spike the CPU on one of the network nodes, right? Oh, and uh, so, Deepak, I have a question for you. That command sure. that you just executed, all it is doing is simulating a failure on one of the sites that is in the path of the LSP that you just created, correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So which node are we actually failing here? Which one are we simulating the failure for in your topology? Yeah, once again, good question, uh, Ramesh. So yes, um, I, I, here is a device that we are failing. So LSP was earlier taking the path from site A, P1 to uh, this blue box, which is PTX in this case, and then to uh, our site B. Now we are failing this device. Uh, we are simulating this failure with the help of a CPU spike on PTX 1000 here. So once this. So what is the expected behavior once that site fails? Yeah, so once this site fails, then we'll see that LSP, which was earlier taking this path. I hope you are seeing my mouse cursor. Yes. Uh, will get reprovisioned from site AP1 to uh, P2 to core box and then to remote P. Okay. All right, so now let's go verify all that. Sure, so let's go ahead and look at Paragon now. And we already see that there is a network event which has happened, but before that, let me just quickly point out 
that we have tele as I had spoken earlier that we had telemetry configured. We have telemetry uh, data being captured for all these devices in Paragon Insight. We have uh, we already see a CPU spike happening here, uh, right? You can see a little red dot over here. So let's go back to um, the network event. Yes, we see that one node has gone into maintenance mode. So once we refresh this, we'll see our LSP being reprovisioned. Yeah, you can see that it has already reprovisioned from site A to uh, this. Uh, MX02, then core box PTX08 and remote site B. OK, and let's now go and verify the traffic. Yes, traffic. There is no uh, drop. Yeah, now we have uh, transmit frame rate and RX frame rate is same. There is no change in that. We'll just look at some of the we'll verify some of the show CLIs. Here, yeah, first thing is trace route so you can See that now earlier the path was shortest path was now LSP being reprovisioned it is taking a different path, right? So that's a very good use case wherein uh, we should demonstrated the closed loop automation um, using Paragon, right? So with that I am done on the demo side, Ramesh. Over Deep to you. Deepak Tripathi and Truman Joe, thank you for your time. We look forward to your next video. Thank you, thank you, Ramesh. Thank you, Truman.